Hello everyone. Um, let's continue our discussion on trigonometric functions and look at video number two for laws of cosines. In video one, we were solving for a side and in video two, we're going to solve for an angle. Um, our learning target, understanding how trigonometric functions relate to oblique triangles and solve some of those problems. To be successful, we're going to be using the law of cosine, the formula, and then we're going to find those missing sides and or those missing angles of a triangle. So just a refresher from the first video, we ended up talking about where the law of cosines kind of came from a little bit. Um, it was with us having, um, if we're looking for side A, we're looking at angle A, side B, angle B, that type of stuff. If you need a refresher, make sure you go back and review video number one. So let's just dive right in. So for this example, they want us to find the measurement of angle B. So they want us to find this little guy right here. So uh, previous, we talked about laws of cosine, or sorry, the law of sine. And the law of sine, you needed to know an angle and the opposite side in order to use law of sines. So I don't know B. So that doesn't help. I don't know A and I don't know C. So I don't know any of my angles. So I can't use the law of sines. So that's how I know that I'm going to use the law of cosine. And for our example, because we're looking for angle B, angle B, we're ultimately going to be using the B squared. So we are using this one for this problem, All right? So let's just go through and see if we can plug in the information that we know and see if we can solve this problem. So I'm going to start by just rewriting the formula. Uh, B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of B. So if we need to go back to our problem, we can label our A, Bs, and Cs if we need to. Uh, Angle A, so opposite of angle A would be side A. Angle B, opposite of angle B would be side B. And opposite of angle C would be side C. And this would be side C. So now let's keep plugging and chugging. So do we know B? We know that B is 12 squared equals A. Do we know A? A is 28 squared plus C squared. Do we know C? C is 18 squared minus 2 times A, 28 C, 18 times the cosine of angle B. And we don't know angle B, so that is what we are looking for. So we're just going to pull out our handy dandy calculator if we need to. All right, I'm trying to do some of these calculations. 12 squared is 144 equals 28 squared. Anybody know 28 squared? 784 plus 18 squared. Yep, 324 minus 2 times 28 times 18. And I put that into my calculator, and we get uh, 1,008 times whoops, the cosine of B. And we don't know what B is, because that's what angle B, because that's what we're looking for. So I can just kind of go through and just do my some algebra and kind of simplify this problem down a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave 144 over here for right now. Um, I can combine 784 plus... 324. So I can add 784 plus 324. And that's going to give me 1108 minus 1008 times the cosine of B. A common mistake students will make is you will subtract these two numbers. And right now we cannot subtract these two numbers because you are multiplying it by the cosine of B. So even think of this as a variable, right? We don't know what B is, so technically it's a variable. So even if I just like got rid of that cosine for a second, it would be 1108 minus 1008B. 
all right? And we know we can't subtract those because they're not like terms. So make sure you are not subtracting these because you can't because there's a multiplication right there, right? All right. So what do we do? Oh, no, I don't know. Well, let's kind of do our algebra. We want to get B all by itself. So we got to get rid of all of this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do to get rid of it is I'm going to subtract 1108 from both sides. All right? Um, 144 minus 1108 is negative uh, 964 equals negative 1008 times the cosine of B, right? So I'm getting there. So I want to get B by itself. I got that cosine of B. Um, we got this little multiplication going on right here. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1,008. Divide by 1,008, right? These are going to cancel. So then I'm going to be running out of colors out of... 964 over 1108 equals the cosine of B. So we're almost there. So we have to get B all by itself. And in order to get B all by itself, we need to get rid of the cosine. And we learned that if we take the inverse of both sides, um, a function times its inverse ends up being 1. So I'm going to times this side by the cosine inverse. And I'm going to multiply this side is by the cosine inverse. So that's going to cancel out, right? So the cosine inverse of 964 over 1008 is going to equal angle B. So I'm going to put this into my calculator. I'm going to make sure that I'm in degree mode because I'm talking about degrees. And so I'm going to do the second cosine, second cosine, oops, where's my little thingy? Second cosine, which is going to give me my inverse of 964 divided by 1008. I'm going to hit enter and I am going to get where B equals approximately 16.99. So I'm going to say that it's approximately 17 degrees. So there is my angle measure. Let's spice it up a little bit and try another problem. All right, let's try this really spicy problem. So on this problem, they want us to find the measurement of angle A. So we need to find this guy up here. So if we think of um, what we've been doing so far when it comes to the laws of sines and the laws of cosines, um, I can't use law of sine because I know this angle, but I don't know this side, and I don't know this angle, but I know this side kind of situation. So I need to use the laws of cosine. But in order to use law of cosine, usually we know um, the two sides, that angle in between, to find that third side. But on this one, they want us to find angle A. So this is actually a multi-step problem. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to figure out side C. And we're going to figure out side C by using the laws of cosine. And then once we found out side C, we then actually have a choice of using the laws of sine or the law of cosine. And I think we're going to use the law of sine just to bring that back in for a little bit of practice. So let's see what we got going on in our little picture. If I can get everything. There we go. All right. So um, angle A. So this 8 is actually side A, right? Um, 7 is opposite of angle B, so this would be side B. And then angle C, opposite would be side C. So we know side A and we know side B, so we need to find side C to start with. So to find side C, I am going to use, well, maybe, I am going to use this formula. So I'm just going to rewrite it up here. So we would have c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. So let's plug in what we know. Um, we're looking for c, so we don't know what c is. Um, a is 8 squared plus b, 7 squared, 
minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of angle C, which is 56 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and get C all by itself. And in order to get C all by itself, because right now it's C squared, to get rid of the squared, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of C squared, I get C. And then i got to take the square root of all of that guy, which is um, 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of 56. Right? And then I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into my calculator. And I am going to get C equals, pull out your handsy dancy calculator, turn it on. Um, second x squared gives me my square root. Right? Play along with me. 8 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 8 times 7 times the cosine of 56. And I know that I'm in degree mode. I double checked that before I started doing these problems. So I'm in degree mode, so I'm good to go because I'm talking about degrees. And I hit enter, and I end up getting C is approximately um, 7.1 miles. So I'm going to go ahead and add that into my problem. This is 7.1, just so it's on the picture for me. Because ultimately, I need to find angle A. So I need to find this guy up here. So this is where... Granted, you could go back and you could use law of sine, or excuse me, law of cosine, and put in your a squared and find out angle A. If that's what you want to do, go ahead if that's your prerogative and that makes you warm and fuzzy inside. But I'm actually going to jump down and use the laws of sine because I know angle C and side C, and I don't know angle A, but I know side A. So I can actually use... Um, my sine A and my sine of C. I can actually put those two equal to each other and I can solve it for angle A. So let's try that. So I'm going to do the sine of A over side A equals the sine of C over side C. So we're going to plug in what we know. So sine of angle A, that's what we're looking for, over side A, which is 8, equals the sine of C, 56, over 7.1, which is what we just found. Now I have two fractions that are equal, so I know that they are proportionate. So I know I can do um, numerator times denominator and numerator times denominator, and those are going to be equal. So I'm going to have 8 times the sine of 56 equals 7.1 times the sine of A. I know I want to solve this for A, so I want to get this by itself so I can get A by itself. So I need to get rid of my 7.1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7.1, right? and that's going to cancel that out. And then in order to get my um, A all by itself, since I have sine, I'm going to multiply this side by the sine inverse. And I'm going to multiply this side by the sine inverse. And those are going to cancel. And then that's going to leave me with A on the right side. And on the left side, I'm going to have the sine inverse of um, 8 times the sine of 56 over 7.1. And I'm going to put this into my calculator. And just to be on the safe side when I put this in my calculator to make sure that everything is where it needs to be, I actually add another set of parentheses to keep my numerator all together. So second sign. Oh, where's my little handy, handy little guy? There he is. Um, parentheses. And usually it always gives you that parentheses. So I'm going to add another parentheses. And then I'm going to do 8 times the sine of 56, and then I'm going to close that parentheses. Then I'm going to divide by 7.1, and then close the parentheses. And hit enter, 
and I end up getting, I gotta go back to my pen. Um, I end up getting A is approximately 69.1 degrees. And that's what I'm looking for. Um, make sure you guys are taking some notes. You might need to go back and watch the video again or go in a little bit of slow-mo or get a hold of me if you need some additional help. Um, good luck on your problems. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.